I'm going to look at one of the most popular investment trusts on the AJ Bell Uinvest platform right now, namely Edinburgh Investment Trust. Now, despite its name, Edinburgh is managed by Henley headquartered Invesco Perpetual, and the lead manager is the well known and equally well respected Mark Barnett. He's also responsible for the Invesco Perpetual Income and Invesco Perpetual High Income Funds, among others. However, Edinburgh is an investment trust, a closed ended fund. So anyone who buys this collective will be purchasing shares in an investment company that trade on the stock exchange rather than units in a fund that can be sold or bought once a day. The £1.4 billion collective's mandate is to provide a combination of capital and dividend growth or growth in income, and it seeks to do so by investing primarily in firms listed on the UK stock market, although it can put up to one fifth of its assets overseas. As we can see here, the US currently represents just under 10% of the assets and Europe just over 7%. That mix all reflects the views of Mark Barnett, whom I've heard speak at two conferences in the past month. First, he's not convinced that dividends can keep growing faster than earnings as they've done in the UK over the past few years, and he argues a slowdown in dividend growth will come so cover can be rebuilt. Second, he's not convinced by the reflation trade, which has become populous following the election of President Trump. Barnett argues that key deflationary trends like debt and demographics have not gone away, and that price pressure is unlikely to desist either, even if the headline inflation numbers pick up for a bit. So firms with pricing power are the ones that he's still seeking. And third, Barnett does flag how he thinks the UK market's become very split, with dollar and overseas earnings in vogue, and domestically focused stocks out in the cold. He thinks this is throwing up valuation opportunities among the domestic names where he started to dip his toe in once more. As a result of all of that, tobacco stocks still remain a key part of the Edinburgh Investment Trust portfolio. Reynolds American, British American Tobacco and Imperial Brands are the top three holdings. Barnett also argues the big oil firm dividends are safe. Here he's got a preference for BP over Shell and BP is the fifth biggest position behind those three tobacco stocks and also AstraZeneca. The investment trust offers a 3.5% yield and pays four dividends a year. Gearing is 16%, so the trust does borrow money to try and boost returns, although this could also magnify the effect of any falls in its holdings. The discount to net asset value is just 1.8%, and that's lower relative to the last 10 years. The chart here shows how the underlying value of the portfolio per share compares to the actual quoted share price. The flat line shows the average discount to net asset value, NAV, over the period. So those are the mechanics. The question is, why would your fellow investors be potentially buying an Inbury Investment Trust now? Well, the worldview outlined by Mark Barnett himself, as briefly outlined earlier, will explain some of the continued interest in this high profile fund. After all, there's no guarantee that Trumpflation will prevail. So the dash from defensive to cyclicals and yield generators to turnaround plays may not continue either. Second, there's no guarantee interest rates will shoot higher, even if inflation does pick up, and that could still place a premium on dependable income. In addition, government bond yields are still below where they were 12 months ago, as benchmarked by the UK 10-year gilt, and a 1.4% yield here, well, that may not do the job for every income seeker. And third, Earnings cover for dividends in the UK equity market is skinny, as Barnett said. Although we've had fewer cuts this year, only Sainsbury and EasyJet within the FTSE 100 have actually paired back their shareholder payments of late. A skilled and experienced fund manager should be able to add value for income-seeking uh, investors by picking out dependable payers and dodging the dividend cutters, especially as the former, the payers, have historically provided solid long-term capital returns too. Now, there are risks. Patience is likely to be required with this investment trust, and income as, a, as an investment trend could fall out of fashion if the reflation trade truly takes hold, leaving consumer staples and quality defensives out in the cold. In addition, every fund and fund manager can have their blips. Edinburgh has lagged its peers in the UK equity income category over the last 12 months, with a 1.4% total return against a sector average of 5.5, according to data from the Association of Investment Companies. So as with any fund or investment trust, Investors must ensure they think the collective represents value for money and that it also fits with their overall strategy, target returns, time horizon and tolerance for risk. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.